Hi everybody, it's Eric Murray from thesugarhuddle.com. Well, you know, a lot of people thought that the Seahawks had a chance to really handle the Vikings who have been trending downward. And interesting, interestingly enough, the Vikings, who were eighth in the NFL, allowing just, over, just under 100 rushing yards per game, gave up over 100 rushing yards in the first half alone in this one. And Seattle for the night had 214 rushing yards. But yet, this was a knockdown, drag out defensive struggle because for all the success that Seattle Seattle had on the ground moving the football they didn't throw it very well at all throughout the game and needless to say they just couldn't put points on the board it was three nothing for a long time Seattle eventually turned that into six nothing in the second half after being up three nothing at half but the fourth quarter things really changed and that's where the final score is deceiving because Seattle ultimately won 21 to 7 so there's eight nine ten minutes left in the game Minnesota, Minnesota finally gets something going. They get themselves downside the red zone, a goal-to-go situation. You know, third down, they decide to try a, a run. I believe it was with Dalvin Cook. You know, he gets stuffed, doesn't really gain anything. And then they're at, like, the one- or two-yard line, fourth and goal, out of the gun. They try to throw a pass. Kirk Cousins, he, he targets the wrong guy. You know, he – instead of Adam Thielen who was able to break loose and, and actually get wide open in the back of the end zone he didn't see him and Cousins instead targeted uh, tight end Kyle Rudolph who was actually pretty well covered and a great pass breakup so that drive stalled you know you can make the argument that maybe Minnesota should have kicked a field goal there to, to cut the lead in the half to 6-3 but the thing you also have to realize is that drive was the first time the entire night that the Vikings had crossed midfield. The 416 mark of the third quarter, they finally had a play in opponent territory in Seattle territory. At that point, it was 20 to zero Seattle as far as that category. So finally, Minnesota was able to cross midfield. Uh, got a little bit of help, I believe, on a penalty is, is what got them just past midfield. So, anyways, at the end of the day, you know, Minnesota. Well, actually, you know what? Those are two separate drives. But anyways, the point is, Minnesota finally got it going, and they end up getting stopped there at the goal line. Great goal line stand by Seattle's defense, who was really, really difficult in short yardage, whether Minnesota tried to throw it or Minnesota tried to run it. Seattle's defense was extremely stingy all night long. But anyways, Seattle, they can't do anything with it offensively. They can't extend their lead. Minnesota gets it right back, and with over five minutes to go, they have to settle for long field goals, about a 47, 46-yard kick. And Dan Bailey, who I believe was 47, but Dan Bailey, he's had his struggles in Minnesota, but this one, he, he could do nothing about it. Bobby Wagner, the, the great middle linebacker, the all-pro middle linebacker for the Seahawks, who had a tremendous game, had nine tackles in this one, he actually leaped over the line and was able to – block the kick but it was later revealed through talking about on the telecast and and going over with the rules analyst that it should have actually been a penalty and and it was initially called a penalty and the officials talked about it they picked up the flag and didn't call a penalty but they they have some complicated rules as far as trying to block kicks and one of the things is leverage you can't use your hands to try to elevate yourself uh, over the line of scrimmage even if you're using your teammates you can't do that and you could clearly see on the replay that Bobby Wagner used his hands he pushed his hands down into his teammates shoulder pads and then leaped over the line but the officials didn't see it and that is a tough thing for the officials to catch when they're trying to watch so many guys going up against each other in a confined space like that unless it's super obvious that's one it can easily be missed and unfortunately it's one of many things that for whatever reason, the NFL says it's non-reviewable because more often than not, most penalties aren't reviewable. So a tough break for the Vikings. They stay down six nothing, and that was really kind of a, a deflating, you know, moment for them because they're on the road in Seattle. You know, if they would have gotten that penalty, it would have been a 15-yard penalty, and who knows? Maybe they score a touchdown, make the extra point, and they go ahead six, seven to six. It looked like they were going to do that on the previous drive. Anyway, 6 nothing. Russell Wilson, tremendous scramble for 40 yards. Some tough running by the running backs for Seattle. Eventually leads to a Chris Carson short touchdown run, and that pretty much put it away. Seattle went for two, made it 14-nothing. And then, you know, at that point, there was just under three minutes left. So the game was pretty much over. Kirk Cousins, though, was quickly stripped, sacked, and Seattle picked that up and returned that the other way for a score, made it 21-nothing. 
and then the Vikings, of course, had a garbage time touchdown at the end. But you know, for Minnesota, you know, one of the things that was pointed out over and over again on the Monday Night Football telecast is that you know this year the Vikings have a new offensive coordinator in John DeFilippo. Of course, Pat Shermer left, become the Giants head coach. DeFilippo has some coordinator experience in the past. You know, when he was with the Browns several years ago. And of course, was an assistant coach, uh, mainly a quarterbacks coach. Some of his other stops, including the Eagles. But anyhow, at any rate, one of the things pointed out on the telecast is that how him and Mike Zimmer, it doesn't feel like they're on the same page. It seems like there there's a little bit of a strained relationship, maybe a little bit of a lack of trust because De Filippo, you know, he comes from that Doug Peterson coaching tree, and he wants to be aggressive throwing the football, and a lot of times maybe neglecting the run a little bit. And Mike Zimmer is an old school, you know, defensive minded coach that wants to establish a run, run the ball a lot more. He kind of indirectly called out DeFilippo leading up to this game as far as needing to run the football a lot more. And Minnesota, for a short while to begin the game, tried to establish a run. Then they kind of abandoned it again and, and they couldn't get it done on short yardage plays. And needless to say, they were trying to throw it more and more. Uh, including on a third and short situation, they tried to drop back and throw it instead of running it. And that probably didn't make Zimmer too happy. So at the end of the day, Minnesota's offense, play calling, the execution, you know, all the questions about Kirk Cousins. He, he doesn't have a very good offensive line, which means no running game. So Cousins, just a very average game, 20 of 33. I believe it was 208 yards and a score. The running game, they were held to well, well under 100 yards again. They, again, couldn't do anything in short yardage situations. Offensive line blew some assignments, and, and that made things tough a little bit. The, uh, Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs, each of them had less than 80 yards receiving a piece. Those two guys have frequently had you know 100-yard games each in a lot of contests earlier in the year. So you know Minnesota, and then defensively, you know Seattle, like I said, over 200 rushing yards. Minnesota's defense doesn't give up that kind of rushing yardage, despite the fact that Seattle's number one in the league running the football. Mike Zimmer, interestingly enough, in the postgame press conference, actually said that he didn't think they were that bad, uh, you know, playing the run against Seattle for the simple fact that Russell Wilson had like 60 some rushing yards and they had like a, a, you know, another big gain on a fluke play, broken play Seattle in the first half, and that accounted for another 20 or 30 yards. So, while those things are very true, at any rate, they were getting pushed around up front. Seattle was having their way with them. Tough running inside. Seattle did a great job with that. Wilson did a great job using his feet like he frequently does. He's a guy who really comes alive in the fourth quarter. And in his final stat line throwing the ball, he had, I think he was 10 of 20, but he for sure had only 72 passing yards and interception. Very ugly numbers. And again, that's, that's for an entire game. And he's had a lot of games like that entering the fourth quarter and a lot of games even after the fourth quarter where the, the final numbers aren't very good, even for all the great statistical seasons he's had. But at any rate, he always finds a way to make big plays in the fourth quarter, and that 40-yard run was really huge, and that eventually led to the touchdown that made 14 nothing and broke the game open and, and basically put it away with just under three minutes to play. So that's kind of what Wilson does. But, you know, Seattle has this formula, this recipe, you know, running the ball a lot, playing great defense, you know, having that offensive balance. And that recipe just continues to work, and, and Minnesota, yet another victim, going against the Seahawks, who've just been a, a really red-hot football team since about week three or four, really on a roll now. So the Seahawks, you know, they improved 8-5. and five. They're the, the five seed in, in the NFC playoff picture. It looks like they're going to have an easy time securing that. And on the other side of it, the Vikings are still uh, just ahead as the sixth seed in the NFC. They're 6-6 six, six and one half game ahead of some of these other teams. They got to play Green Bay next, who's actually right back in the playoff race. Seattle has two very winnable games in their final three outings against a pair of three and ten division teams. So it should be very, very interesting to see how the whole thing winds up. But anyways, I also did a story on this, and so please go to thesugarhuddle.com and read that story. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and also like my Facebook page, which is obviously The Sugar Huddle. Thank you.